What up, what the world? It's your homeboy, Wordplay TJ, and I'm back with another video for you. This time around, I'm gonna talk about why Universal Music Group wants to create a new royalty system. Stay tuned. All right, so here we go. I want to talk about a article that I found in Music Business Worldwide that talks about a letter that Sir Lucian Grange wrote to Universal Music Group. So if you don't know who Sir Lucian Grange is by now, you might be in for a little bit of a lesson. Lucian is the current chairman and CEO of Universal Music Group, and he's been there since 2011. He also was a key player in bringing Spotify to the United States. For those of you that don't track what the major labels are up to, you might have heard about Lucian from Jay-Z's Moonlight. In Moonlight from 444, Jay-Z says, that shit ain't right, Lucian is cool, but Lucian don't write, Doug ain't this tight, so f what we selling, f is we making, cause their grass is greener, cause they always raking in mo. So basically what Jay is saying is that Lucian is not a part of the artwork. He's a part of the business and he gets more green than the artists themselves. So it seems a little bit weird that he's the one coming in and ushering in the desire for a new system for artists. So before I talk about the new system that he wants to put in place, let's talk about the old system, the pro rata system. In this Music Business Worldwide article, Lucian talks about believing that the payment system is outdated and the rewards for those don't reward people that make actual art. And I'm gonna talk about what he means by that a little bit later. Before I get to that, I wanna talk about what the pro rata system is. So the pro rata system works by pooling all the revenues made in a month in a country, and then they divide that amount by the total streams generated in that month per country. If an artist like Drake earns 2% of the total streams, then the owners and the writers of that song will receive about 2% of that revenue. So let's look at two examples, right? So one of a major artist and one of maybe a indie artist artist or a lesser known artist that get a decent amount of streams. So say for example, all of the dollars that are raked in by Spotify in a month equal out to $1 million. And then Drake gets 500 million streams out of 1 billion in that month. Well, he earned half of the streams that are available. That means that he would also get half of the revenue. And that revenue will total to about $500,000. But say a lesser known artist in this pro rata system earns about a million streams. That's about 0.1% of the streams earned and therefore they would get 0.1% of all the revenue as well. That revenue adds up to about $1,000 out of the million that was earned. So whatever percentage that you contribute is the percentage that you get back. But at the same time, there's a little bit of issue with competition. And that's what Lucian is talking about in his letter. This competition is getting a little unfair. And it's not only getting unfair for DIY artists, it's getting unfair for the major artists as well. With the pro rater system right now, DIY artists not only have to compete with the major labels, they also have to compete with these small, stupid 31 second tracks that are being uploaded to the platform. And in his letter, this is what Lucian is getting at. So he says, once those fans have subscribed, consumers are often guided by algorithms to generic music that lacks a meaningful artistic context. It's less expensive for the platform to license, or in some cases, it's been commissioned directly by the platform. So he is saying that there are thousands and thousands of tracks that are about 30 one seconds long that are being uploaded to places like Spotify that compete in that larger pool. So say that 1 billion streams that we're talking about earlier is actually 2 billion streams. And the second billion streams is a bunch of 31 second tracks. So you can see why Lucian is a little upset about the system at current. If you're not weeding out all of that 
mess and all of those stupid songs that the algorithm is pushing people to, then you don't get a path to the real art. So the last thing I want to address is what he says in the letter. He says that this year we'll be working on the innovation that is absolutely essential to promote a healthier, more competitive music ecosystem, one in which great music, no matter where it's from, is easily and clearly accessible for fans to discover and enjoy. That for me is just golden. That means that these major labels are going to do what's best for all artists that are out there. And I hope so. I hope that they push for some change in the market. Even though Universal Music Group was responsible for bringing this, you know, company <laughs> to the US, it doesn't mean that they don't have the best intentions. Arguably, bringing streaming to the US has revitalized the music business and given a way for DIY artists and major artists to actually make some real revenue. Not everybody has been able to capitalize off of that, but at the same time, the writing is on the wall. It's pretty clear that streaming does work and streaming is better than the alternative of of people downloading hundreds and thousands of songs without you being compensated at all. But I wanna know what you think. What do you think about this whole entire letter? What do you think about this message? And what do you think about what Lucian has to say to Universal Music Group? Be sure to leave those thoughts down in the comment section. I appreciate you watching this video. Be sure to share it with somebody that might get something out of it. And until next time, it's your homeboy Wordplay TJ. Peace.